What's up, fam? Your boy Sergio Aliaga here. Doing a dual caliper hydro e brake setup today. I'm gonna save the hydro e brake for a later on video. Uh, but today I'm gonna show you how to do the dual caliper setup. I haven't really seen anybody do it in detail for a 350Z. I have the Pro Series dual caliper bracket here. I have the level ride concepts tunnel mount for the hydro e brake. I have Njuku's racing line package that. I bought off of them because I didn't feel like parting it out myself. I also have a caliper from AutoZone and carbon fiber rotors from AutoZone with ceramic brakes from AutoZone. Now to get started you want to remove your calipers here. There's two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. They're 19 millimeter bolts so just go ahead and untighten them. Now that you have the bolts removed you want to take off the caliper um, to keep it out of the workspace it is suggested to zip tie it. I'm going to zip tie it to one of my Voodoo 13 arms here. Actually, because of my Voodoo 13 arms, it just sits nicely into it. the cradles right there. So, I'm going to save the zip tie for something else. Now, you want to take off your rotor. It can just come off. Sometimes you have to beat it with a hammer for about an hour. A little tip, make sure your e-brake's not engaged, otherwise the two e-brake pads in here are gonna tighten it and it's gonna be to get off. We'll see if it comes right off. Oh, look at that, it comes right off. Awesome. Well now we have to get the axle nut off here. Uh, you need a 32 millimeter socket. Don't forget the cotter pin here. So we'll take that off. Now this does have about 180 to 210 pounds of torque. And depending on who actually installed it, it could have more, it could have less. So just be prepared to throw in some elbow power in there. I ran a disc for, from AutoZone to get the axle nut off. So you can see what it looks like. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. Gonna use my breakaway, or my, uh, yeah. Brake bar. Oh. Make sure it's <laughs> rookie mistake, make sure it's in gear. So that way this doesn't spin. Well, I came off really easy. So whoever put it on there last, definitely didn't put 210 pounds of torque in it. I don't know if you guys can see, but there is Six bolts to this axle here that's connected to the drive shaft or uh, the differential here. They're 14 millimeters. You need a 14 millimeter wrench, wrench and a socket with an extension on it. So I'm gonna break those loose and remove them. Uh, I painted the bottom one here so I knew how it went in. I mean, I don't know if it's necessary, it's just good practice for me at least. All right, so to be noted, these only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about putting it in the backwards. But since I'm by myself, it's a little hard to get this out. So I'm gonna zip tie through one of these holes that the bolts came out over one of my Voodoo 13 control arm here, my lower control arm. So go ahead. You might have to use two zip ties. Once you have that zip tied, we have to get this, push this through. Uh, best way to do it is use your lug nut keys or a socket and then get a rubber mallet and bang on the socket to push the spline drive through it. Then you can wiggle it out, cut your zip tie, and there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy.
Okay, so we remove the knuckle. There's four bolts. 17 millimeter bolts. You had to break loose. After you remove those, it pops right off. And then we can take off the e-brake assembly and the dust shield. So let's get to it. Now that we have those full bolts removed, this should just come off. If not, you gotta hammer it off. Most likely it's seized on there. Yep, so grab a rubber mallet. Bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. All right, so what we have left here is the e-brake assembly. It's just these two flathead type pins that, as you can see, it's already marked. They're lock, lock. So we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver, turn it 90 degrees. By doing so, you're gonna release the pin. There's a spring. They say wear eye goggles, safety goggles. You don't really need to if you're intelligent enough to do it slowly and cautiously. So let's go ahead and remove one. One down, one more to go. All right, now all you have left to do is to remove the rest of the e-brake assembly. It should just, if you can finesse it, should be able to just to finesse it out. You can go ahead and take everything apart if you'd like. I try to keep it all together. Just like that. Okay, now get to the dust shield. You have to remove the e-brake assembly bracket or the e-brake cable bracket here. Um, to remove that, you have to remove this. It's very simple. There is a little pin here. It's a pain in the butt, but it's just just in there. Nothing else is really holding it. You get yourself something small enough that you can poke the pin out. Bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. There you go. And I'll just put that on the side. Now you can release this up. The bolts are in the back. There's two bolts, both of which are 17 millimeters. And I'll just pull the e-brake bracket out. There goes your dust shield. Now I gotta cut the dust shield. I have gone ahead and marked where I wanna cut. I've gone ahead and marked where I want to cut. As you can see, this is where that e-brake brace is going to be. So I marked right here at this groove. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. If you can't see it, I apologize. So this groove goes from here to here. And there's this part right here. And at this groove, beginning of this groove, I'm going to do it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out right here and there. And now that we got our dust calipers cut out, we need to put everything back together in reverse order and we're good to go. Our new cup, our new bracket. Then our dust caliper. Then our e-brake brace, cable brace. Just like that. Make sure everything is in place. The 42 millimeter bolts that came along with the Pro Series bracket in place. Now, put these on. These are only supposed to be torqued down to, I think, 25 pounds. Now, I'll put this, back, now I'll put this annoying little thing back in with the pin. So I must have put this in backwards because it wasn't fitting right. So I'm just gonna swap it out. So this just goes in place like that. Just 
spring back where it belongs. Time to put the knuckle back on. Then you have those four bolts at the Pro Series. Bracket came with 42 millimeter ones. So I get those in, tighten those up. Those are 79 to 85 pounds of torque for the torque spec. Now, all that's left to do before we put the dual calipers on is put the axle back in. It just slides right in. Now that we get the axle back on, it's time to put the axle nut on and the cotter pin in. I think the uh, torque spec for the axle nut is 180 to 210. Now is the time for the rotor to come back on. Then install your OEM caliper with the Pro Series dual caliper bracket they give you. Okay, so there should be two bags of bolts that say Brembo and 350Z. You wanna grab the 350Z ones if you don't have the Brembo pack or the, if you don't have the Brembo brakes. They have these spacers on them. Take the spacers off. These are going to be for your independent calipers. Save these. Now, you should have four leftover bolts that are, I think, I want to say 32 millimeters long. These are going to go with the spacers. Now, these are going to go onto the OEM caliper that's in the front. So put these on, top and bottom, and then the, the bolts that the spacers came off are gonna go top and bottom on the independent calipers. So let's do that real quick. So as you guys can see, I'm wearing a different shirt. That's because I goofed up and somehow my camera it didn't record me installing the independent caliper. It really is as simple as the first one. It just connects to the Pro Series fabrication bracket. Here, I'll show you. This connects to the Pro Series fabrication fa bracket right here. The two bolts that came came along with it. Uh, there's no spacer involved. You just bolt it up. And you want to spin the rotor and make sure it spins. So mine's in gear. So that's it for today's video, fam. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Next video is gonna be installing the nameless hydraulic e-brake. This little puppy right here. So look forward to that. If you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to see, let me know, comment below. Uh, if you have any criticism, let me know. I appreciate constructive criticism. It will help me grow. This is just the beginning. I also run Florida Drift Society on Facebook. If you guys are in Florida or moving to Florida or just want to join the group, go ahead. I will add you as soon as I get the notifications. Uh, so I have a calendar that is the most up-to-date calendar and has a lot more events than any other calendar out there. No matter what anybody says, you can do a side-by-side -side comparison and you'll see for yourself. So until next time, peace.